Hey guys, what's up? This is Sharon talking. Welcome back to my channel. And today, the video, we'll be doing a review on the Ultra Deluxe Urpina banner. This banner here is, well, very interesting because it got buffed and buffed to very good levels. I must say that many people were just thinking about skipping this banner easily because they have plans for other banners like, you know, Matriarch or Joe. But then Urpina is now way better than she was before. And, well, I'll be giving a review on both Leonard and Elizabeth as well, but they are not good, especially because they are blunt specialists and we already received so many blunts. They are so much better than them. Uh, also, there is one interesting thing is that there is a data mine about the banner and we have this image and for the first time they made a three step banner and especially unique you can use even three gems here you can use uh, 6000 gems to guarantee one ss but this ss is not a guarantee to be from the featured styles so you have like a 20 percent chance of getting your pina by doing a three step pull uh, you can do this three times, so it kind of reduces the uh, needed gems to pity your pina if you need to. That increases the value because she's the only one that matters here. That's for sure. I must say that if you have some gems and you want to play with this banner and do the step up, it's okay. It, it has some value. I do believe that it has some value. Even if you have to pity her, you have to spend around, I think, uh, 36... K gems, yes. At the most, 36k gems. Okay, let's start with the reviews. Starting from Leonard, this guy has only two different styles. One is S, the other one is the current SS that we will be able to summon. Two arrows for STR, one arrow for agility, and penalty on endurance. But you can get it back by using his S style. Then for modifiers, he has 96% increase. That's kind of high for STR. 70 for endurance, not so bad. He has very terrible dexterity. I think that if he was used against Cyber Dragon, he could even miss the attacks because of such a bad dexterity, and that is max it. 57 is very low. 75 for agility is okay. Uh, and bad intelligence in average levels for a law of enchant. His will is not so bad on 61 as well. So, for our skills, this guy is kind of off a problem. He tries to be a single target attacker that has cheap attacks, but then he fails to have a nuke option. Uh, he's more for constant damage, but then he's not exactly that good on boss fights, so I don't know where you'll be using this guy. Uh, the first skill is blunt damage, B power 22 modifier, that's not so high, but for 4 VP you cannot ask for more. But then the second one is the same as from Actor, from School's Banner, is a 25 modifier B power attack with 5 BP codes. You can use this three times in a row. The first one can also be used more than three times in a row. The problem is just that you will not be able to start with the blunt attack, only if you start with the third skill. The third skill is an A power attack, 28 modifier, that's around the same as 6 BP codes skills, but instead of single target, it's a row attack. I don't think that the increasing power is justified by being row. I think they sacrificed some of the power just to add two elements. It's both slash and blunt. As you can see, you can kind of start with this attack and then choose slash or blunt after, but then the damage is lacking. You will not do so much damage with the row attack and not with the follow-up attacks be it the first or the second skill. Sadly, that's how he was designed. And now for passives, the first one is a revive type. When he gets KO'd, he will revive with 50% of his HP. This is usually found on some tanks. And then the second one, on the start of a round, he gets a buff of STR by 20%. That's a good value, actually. Some characters have only 15. And for the four. So, the buff is better than just 15% increasing damage. You get more by the buff. But then, uh, if you see, it's better for clearing waves, but which type of waves will this guy be clearing? Because he lacks power. None of his attack will be strong enough to clear waves unless you are facing very weak enemies. Even through his STR is so high, he doesn't have the power coming from the skills. So, uh, there is only one good thing that you can get from inheritance, and I still don't think it's justified. 
And that is uh, this attack here called Swing Down. Do you remember Global Exclusive Katarina? She has this attack as well. So you can start with 8 BP and then you can use Beat Down twice. So he becomes a Blunt Specialist. And remember, we got way too many Blunt Attackers in the game. Swing Down is also not that powerful for 8 BP. It's only S damage, 37 multiplier. We already have characters like uh, Ocelus and Nani that can do way better damage with 8 BP. 8 BP is like the future. There will be many attackers that will have double S damage instead of just S. And in the far future, he gets an upgrade to this another skill that he can inherit that deals very high damage for turn 2 attack. I don't think that is also worth investing in a character like him. Sadly, he's very below standard for current global and an easy skip. And now let's discuss Elizabeth. She is also from Saga Scarlet Grace. She has two different styles. This one will be given during the event. And the first one is the current one that we can summon for. She gets two arrows for STR, one arrow for agility. And that's how she is built. Well, for multiplier, she has very high STR as well. 90%, that's not so bad for our club users. We don't have many attack with the current club users in the game. She has 37 Endurance, that's extremely low. She cannot be used in the front line unless she uh, has the perfect resistance. Uh, 75 dexterity, that's pretty good. She will not be missing like Leonard. And 68 agility, that's pretty bad for a character that you want to attack first. She would not. And then uh, we have average values for intelligence, will, love, and charm. Her multipliers are not so high. And then let's check the skills. The first one is Frying Pan. This one is not bad per se. It has two elements, it's both blunt and heat, has a chance to stun. Remember, her intelligence is not so high. At least it's not the worst. 52 is better than most of the buffers we have. But small chance doesn't really help. If it was medium, it could be reliable, but it's not. But C power 15 for 3 BP and double element is not bad. The second attack has A power 31 Muji Fire and blunt damage as well. Uh, this attack is not bad, has higher damage output even than heaven on earth as a comparison in other 6 BP skills. Uh, and should be less interesting than the third one. Sky Travel is a triple S damage attack with 61 multiplier. It's not as high as some other triple S attacks. It's more close to the start. We start triple S damage with 56 multiplier. We have 61 here, so yeah, not as much as some other characters that have nukes like Hannibal or even Liza. Uh, medium chance to stun this time instead of being small so she can stun some targets but when do we need stun and if we need stun we need a reliable stun because we need to cast stun every new turn that's why uh stun unit with bubble pop can do it the farmable versatine can also do it because they have very high intelligence and you can use them with a Anima stream formation to guarantee they will keep stunning. But Sky Travel is only used once, then she has to rely on Fry Pen, and Fry Pen will not be reliable. The damage is okay, not the highest, but for 12 BP, I wanted more than that. Then we have uh, Power Charge 2 as the first passive, that is what allows her to start with Sky Travel. Yeah, because it needs 12. That's very bad because she needs 4 turns to be able to use this again. Then we have the second passive that gives her a 40% chance of reducing the incoming damage. Reducing, not negating. She debuffs the damage by 35% and she counterattacks with the first skill, with a small chance to stun. She will not stun, she will not do high damage. It's a very high risk for a very low payoff. In my opinion, it doesn't work that way. We got two very interesting styles with Cotton and Amy. They have 40% chances of negating direct attacks. She just decreases the incoming damage. It makes no sense to use her, sadly. And she also has fired up 4. As you can see, uh, she doesn't have much high damage. She has a costly skill, she doesn't have reliable skills. Sadly, both her and Leonard are not for current game. So now it's time to discuss the main goal for this banner, Urpina. Ultra Deluxe Urpina is now 
absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah, the best character from the banner. Uh, as you can see, she has four different styles. All the first three are already in the game and they were platinum, so that's pretty easy to well get inheritance. Kind of only needs one skill for inheritance and most people already have it. Well, she gets two arrows for STR, three for dexterity, and yeah, nothing else. She doesn't have much endurance, she has even a penalty, but you can use her A style to increase it. It's a good thing because she will need. For multipliers, she starts with 94% on STR and 11 as plus, 77 for agility and 17 as plus. She's fast, she can attack before many other characters. Then she has a uh, well below average endurance and will, and she needed a little more than this. There is a risk when using her. She has some counter tank attacks. We will talk about this. And also very low levels for love and average values for intelligence and charm. Charm is needed, but intelligence is not. We will not be using her for status elements or the buff. She got four more points in charm in global. That's the only buff they made to her status. Now we can even ignore that. The first skill is a D power, then multiplier attack, sheep and weak. That attacks in a row, and it's indirect, okay, good. But then it's not so strong, we have problems with row attacks because uh, the developers don't give us many stages where the enemies are aligned in a row, so it's very limited. But at least it's cheap. And then uh, we have the second attack, and this one here on Japan, it was only 36 multiplier as power, uh, and it had an effect with passive that allowed her to follow up once with the first Q, that is the row attack. So she would just use cross break and then sword spirit. But then this was changed for global. Right now in global, the second skill is now 11 as base and 8 when you fully awaken, because it now has three levels of awakening. Uh, and they upgraded the power. Now the power is double S, but we don't know the real value of this modifier. We have SS attacks with 45 and up to 55 modifier. So it can be on the start or on the end. We don't know. We have to test. I, s I think that it will be around 52. That is the same modifier as Flash Triple Trust. But then she gets something that she already had. Uh, she will also follow up with the first skill called Sword Spirit. But then they remove it, the necessity of using the passive and they just added it inside the skill. The good thing is that when we get future styles of Urpina, she will be able to inherit this skill and not rely on a passive. No Fuse. Fuse, first style, has a Shay's attack as well with Submachine Gun after Proton Rocket, but when you inherit Proton Rocket in into his second style, he loses the Shay's attack because it relies on a passive. So having this as it is, it's better because she can just pass this on a future style. That is when she gets one, because this is the last one that she received it. Still very interesting, because now what they did was, because they removed it from being from passive, they added a new damage passive. This one increases her damage by 15 when she equips a sword. And she always equips a sword, but we'll be back on this later. Uh, then we have the third skill. And this one is very interesting. This one is a counter, evade, uh, stance with 10 BP that counters all direct attacks with a very powerful attack. But not just that, it also deals damage before she enters the stance. Let's try to understand. First, uh, 13 BP, you fully awaken this to 10, and when you use it, you will deal A power 31 modifier with slash and thrust. Okay, it's not so high. A power is usually something that you use with 6 BP. Here is 10. Okay, but then she enters the evasion stance. She will counters all direct attacks. That's the same thing as global exclusive Monica. She kind of competes in some situations. And then, because of that, every attack will do no damage. But then, if the enemy uses an indirect attack, she will receive damage. So this is kind of niche, if you want it or not. Because some situations, the enemies will just use a mix between AoE attacks, sometimes uh, directs, but not all the time. If your stage has many direct attacks and you can place Urpina in the front line of a Tiger Shark formation, she will draw many attacks. She doesn't have a way to taunt by herself, so 
you really need Tiger Shark because it's the best one. It increases STR as well. And she will just counter with Slash and Pierce. And the damage here is different. This one is also Slash and Pierce, but AoE. Just like Global Exclusive Monica. But there's a very important difference. Global Exclusive Monica mm, counterattacks with a C power attack. Call it Sword Ballet. She will counterattack with an A power attack and with double elements, both slash and pierce, not just pierce. The damage will be way higher. I, I suggest that she will be doing around or close to double the damage that Global Exclusive Monica does because she has better passives, she has better status, and well, even a better cycling. Both will use 10 DP, so that's interesting. But Europina will be able to use this again on turn three, while Monica will not. So let's give a look on this list. We have some counterattacks here, and there is Fernius here in the end. And that's the character that's most close to her, because it counterattacks with AoE. Uh, Fernius has a very powerful attack that's Maelstrom. It's insanely strong, like S power, 36 modifier. It costs only 8 BP, so he can also use this on turn 3. But he does not rely on using uh, Inheritance skill, we'll be discussing this later. Um, it's also double element, Pierce and Cold here, while she is Slash and Pierce. So they can still be used in different situations. But the thing is, uh, Fornius received damage. But he has insane endless and will. He had the highest one on release, so that he can take some direct damage without well, dying fast. There's also a passive that decreases damage by 30%, so Farnius had a risk. Surviving the damage and then counter with insane counterattacks. Rupina is easier to use because she negates the incoming direct damage. So, you know, there's a different risk. The risk with her is lower. The payoff is also high. For Neo has an even higher payoff, but a higher risk. It depends on the situation, you guys will have to decide. Although this skill can be used on Auto, I think you would not be using because the damage itself is not so high. When we are farming, we want speed, we want to clear fast. But then if you have problems with Hidden Dojo, you can just use her and then she will just shine. She can kill everyone by herself. But then some enemies will just prefer to use AoE and in drag attacks and then she will just die because of her very low endurance and will. So, still a little restricted for this strategy. Okay, so let's give a look on the passives. Now we have the Advanced Spirit passive. This one is interesting because it's the same one that we had with Emilia from Gradius Banner. She will recover HP every time that she attacks. And she will also recover BP when she defeats a target. And she can recover BP every time that she counters. Let's say that you are on uh, Hidden Dojo, and then you counter once. You kill one enemy, you get one BP. And then another enemy attacks. You kill another enemy, you get another BP. So two BP already. And that keeps going on. As long as you have enemies attacking you directly. <laughs> Remember, this will not be all the time. But just to explain, she gets more VP that allows her to use her attack more often. And if you are playing on manual, yes. Uh, besides that, she will recover HP every time that she attacks. In the counter as well. So when she counters, she heals as well. But the healing is not so high. There is a problem with the healing. The healing is probably around 90 it is on global and when she's maxed. Yes. Not much, just the same as Ren and some other characters like Emilia too. And there is at least one good thing about this passive as well, and that is, when she uses the second skill that follows up with Sword Spirit, she will heal two times. So if you are thinking about using her on boss fights, every two turns she will be healing herself for 200 or close to 200. That really helps her stay up against boss fights. Another application is just that if you use the second skill and you kill a target with the first attack, that is, the original attack, cross break. She heals 1 BP, and then if she uses Sword Spirit and kills another target, she will recover 2 BP as well. The skill is already 8 BP. You can use it on turn 1 and turn 3, or on turn 2 and turn 3 easily. So that allows her to have more BP faster than most characters in the game, if everything goes according to plan. But I think that she will kill at least one target. <laughs> 
yes. Uh, Steel would not allow her to attack on turn 1 and turn 2. So forget about turn 1 and turn 2 and go for turn 2 and turn 3 or turn 1 and turn 3. Okay, and then the last passive is for the 5. It gives her 20% increase in damage. So let's give a look here. The first one was changed for 15% increase in damage at all times when equipping a sword. And then fired up increases by 20 more. She has 35% increase in damage at all times. That's very good for a character that also has utility with the healings. Yeah. Uh, so I must say that right now, let's compare her to two other characters that we can use with uh, double S power attacks and 8 BP. They are Annie, either the newest Annie or the free Annie. They have flash triple trust. That attack is very strong and it can be used by two characters that most people have. The other one is the Perfector Ocelos, uh, but they do slash and pierce damage. They can kind of work very well with Urpina as well when you are facing bosses, if you can bring three damage dealers. But yeah, uh, it's some type of competition, but after using the second skill, she follows up with the first one that allows her to do more damage than both any and Perfector Ocelos. I don't think she can compete with Grey when Grey attacks five times, but Grey is only strong on turn one, then he loses a lot of potential for turn two, but still very, very powerful. There's another competition that comes from Rofus. Rofus deals blunt double S damage and then four S damage with Slash. He still deals a very high amount of damage, but his skill is 10 DP. So, well, he also gets paralyzed, so <laughs> he cannot use this again. He just has a weak attack for third turn. Uh, the good thing is that she attacks like Annie and Perfector Ocelos, but deals more damage, but only slash. Very good for boss fights, very good for cycling, but there's one thing that makes her even better for boss fights. And that is inheriting a skill from her second Platinum style. Let's check the skill. The skill is Two Swords Dance. It's a fast BP recovery skill that costs 1 BP, but then when you awaken, it's zero. It's a free skill to use. And every time you use, you recover 3 BP. So let's try to make a calculation here. She uh, uses 8 BP on turn 1. She's left with 2. Then she uses Two Swords Dance on turn 2. She gets 3 by default, so she gets now 5. And then uh, she got three more, she now has eight. And on the next turn, she gets three more. So on turn three, she is back to 11, allowing her to use the third skill again. Yes, let's get back into the other one. So instead of just using a normal attack, she gets way more value by charging three more BP to always have enough to use either skill two or skill three. And this is very nice for manual bo in boss fights because you can just decide where it's good to use attacks. Sometimes you can just wait and stack her BP till you have some buffs coming from either Noel's daughter or from Matriarch. She also has very good agility, so she will just uh, be good for evasion as well with Matriarch. Any and Perfector Assos have even more than that. <laughs> but okay, you can just go with the tree depending on the situation. So, I think that this girl is pretty powerful now. Uh, if you think about the cycling, she's kind of very close to the top of the slash damage. She brings utility and a different strategy for counter that right now may not seem too good because most of the boss fights are only against one boss. But in the future, we'll have tower and a very challenging tower where we will have many bosses on the same time and if they do direct attacks against Rupina you see a lot of fun because it's an AoE attack with a lot of power and she can keep using it uh, faster than anyone else. She can only compete on this department with Furnews and Furnews takes damage. Furnews will get released alongside three other very good styles. One is black the other one is the second version of Julian Jim that makes Julian even better. And a version of Boston with the highest uh, damage for Blunt in the game. Very similar to Liza, but even higher. So, well, uh, let's return to the banner image. I really think Rupina is good now. They made a discount on her banner because they know that uh, the other characters are not so good. People will not chase them. But if you want Rupina and you uh, want to take the risk, uh, try the first three step-ups and maybe you get her, she will be very useful. 
Having the best 8 pp cycle for slash damage is also amazing. And just one more comparison, most of the slash damage dealers relied on double crush as main source of damage. Uh, the problem with them was that they could open with a very powerful attack, but then on turn 3 or turn 2, they didn't have anything so strong to keep up. Now Urpina will have similar or higher output damage than most double attackers with double crush, but we'll still be able to do very high damage on turn 3. If you have a stage that has only one or two enemies, she will shine. And it's easier to find the scenarios instead of just finding a scenario with, you know, uh, row enemies. So even if she fails to kill with the first skill, she used the second skill to finish the same enemy that she attacked. And that is pretty interesting. Is she strong? Yeah, of course. But if she's worth summoning uh, with two other characters that are not good, when you don't really need her, well, maybe not. That's why I can say that if you really want to skip, you can. Rupina is an amazing unit that will be strong, but if she doesn't add too much to you, you can skip and wait a little to see the upcoming banners. And decide upon that, because we're close to anniversary, this banner will still be active by then, and they will probably re-release some old banners with discount and release some very interesting banners as well. So that's it guys, thank you so much for watching this video, please subscribe if you haven't, if you want to support the channel, you can use here the links in the description. What do you think about this banner? Also say something here in the comments so we can chat. We see each other on the next video. Bye.